Hello Zabbix users, enthusiasts and experts. We have finally launched a new Zabbix long-term supported release, Zabbix version 5.0, with tons of new improvements, fixes and features. In these videos, I will guide you through more than 20 new features and existing feature updates and also demonstrate them to you on our own dashboards. We might also take a quick peek at the new parameters in our config files. Feel free to join me for the what's new technical overview and see for yourself how we have improved and evolved Zabbix in version 5.0. Thinking about moving your environment to the cloud? We have you covered. Zabbix is fully supported and available for deployment in the cloud. We support leading cloud services providers such as AWS, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean and many, many more. With a couple of clicks, you can have a live, fully scalable Zabbix infrastructure completely hassle-free. Just select the version that you wish to deploy, go through the deployment procedure as instructed by the cloud provider, and you will have a live, scalable instance in a matter of minutes. We also keep these updated, so keep an eye out for the latest, cutting-edge version of Zabbix to fit your monitoring requirements. Thinking of setting up Zabbix on-premises? We have a large selection of packages available for you. Just navigate to our download page, select the corresponding Zabbix version, OS, database, backend, and frontend, and follow these step-by-step -step instructions. In a matter of minutes, you should have a live environment going on. We also have a couple of quick start links and videos available on our download section that can get you started with your monitoring journey. One of the more requested features over time has always been SAML authentication out of the box. Well, in version 5.0 you get it. Just open Administration, Authentication, SAML Settings, and Enable SAML Authentication checkbox. Prepare your identity provider and put in the necessary identity provider and single sign-on parameters. Click Update, and there you go. You have configured your out-of-the-box SAML integration. Version 5.0 adds the ability to encrypt the traffic between your front-end and the database. All you have to do is mark the new TLS encryption checkbox during the initial Zabbix frontend configuration. Afterwards, feel free to specify any of the optional parameters that follow it. For example, you may wish to verify your certificate authority against the CA file, or verify the host to which the client is connecting to. TLS encryption currently is supported for MySQL and PostgreSQL databases, with host verification being optional on PostgreSQL. The communication between the Zabbix server and the Zabbix backend database can also be encrypted in version 5.0. Like all things server, this is configured in the Zabbix server config file, and when you open it up, you will see a couple of new parameters that start with dbtls. Similar to the front-end scenarios, you may opt in to use some of them or skip the others. For example, you can verify the database certificate authority, the Zabbix server client connecting to the database, or maybe you wish to specify the specific cipher suits that can be used to enable this encryption. You can now restrict the execution of specific item keys per agent in version 5.0. When you open the agent configuration file up, you will see a couple of new parameters such as allow key and deny key. These are used to respectively either whitelist or blacklist the execution of specific item keys or item key patterns by using the wildcard symbol. For example, you may wish to restrict the execution of all of the system.run keys with the exception of something specific. This is where the allow key comes in. Once a key execution has been restricted, if you attempt to execute it, you will see unsupported item key in the front end. Afraid that someone is looking over your shoulder when you're defining your new password via macro? Don't worry, in version 5.0, you can use secret text to hide all of your macro value symbols. The macro values are also not preserved when you're either exporting a template or a host with these macros, or trying to clone one of the hosts or templates that have these macros. For some time now, we have been working on implementing and integrating the native TimescaleDB functionality together with Zabbix. This will allow our users to greatly scale up their instances and improve the out-of-the-box performance by using TimescaleDB. On top of supporting the native out-of-the-box partitioning provided by TimescaleDB together with Zabbix, we now have added the ability to use the TimescaleDB compression functionality. All you have to do to use this is make sure that you are using a compatible TimescaleDB version for this functionality 
and afterwards open the administration general housekeeping tab and enable the compression. This allows you to save a lot of space for your historical data based on the efficiency of the compression algorithm used by Timescale. As some of you may have already heard, we've been hard at work for a while now on our new Go agent. Go agent serves as a drop-in replacement for our old agent. Why use Go? Well, actually, it enables you to develop a lot of plugins and integrations for Zabbix in a more simplified way when compared with the old C agent. The installation is quite simple, very similar with the old agent, and the configuration is also of no difference except for those couple plugin lines when you can add and enable your custom plugins. Still keen on using the old C agent? Well, don't worry, it's not going away anywhere. We're going to support both of them side by side, one Go agent, one C agent. You can use both and they will be supported for the foreseeable future. We don't plan on getting rid of the old classic C agent. Version 5.0 focuses quite a bit on user experience and ease of use. We have taken a look at the existing functionalities and have decided to improve quite a few of them. For example, when we're talking SNMP, it used to be that you had to define your SNMP parameters per item. We have decided to change that and have moved it to per interface, which makes defining SNMP communities, for example, so much easier, less chances of mixing them up. We have also added the ability to unacknowledge already acknowledged problems. Happens sometimes. Acknowledging something by mistake, now you can fix that. We have added the ability to mass update macros. For example, if you wish to change a password, an SNMP community, or something else, and mass on multiple hosts or templates. We have also moved the ability to define your default messages from actions to media types. Makes a lot more sense to define different default messages for email, some integration with ITSM system, SMS, and so on. So this way you can have a default message for a specific media type instead of per action. We have also worked hard to fill in some missing pieces when it comes to existing functionality. For example, if you're using low-level discovery to create hosts from host prototypes, you can now define macros on the host prototype. This is really nice to use with the existing secret text functionality to hide your macros. In addition, you can now compare strings in your trigger expressions, which was not possible before. We have also worked on the existing low-level discovery functionality and we have made it that much more flexible by adding the overrides feature. Overrides allows you to analyze a value obtained by an existing low-level discovery macro which you specify and if the value matches some pattern, we execute override operations that we have defined in the override rule. Override operations can, for example, take one of your prototypes and create it in some specific way. For example, with a custom trigger severity, custom tag, custom discovery status, or maybe you want to create it in a disabled or enabled state. Many new improvements have been made to the way that low-level discovery works. For example, for your ODBC discovery, you can now specify the connectivity parameters as the third parameter of the discovery rule key. You can also use dbodbc get to obtain the output of your SQL command as a simple JSON. In a similar fashion, you can use jmxget to obtain the values of your mbeans and mbean attributes as a JSON. You can then use the low-level discovery macro section together with JSON path to specify custom low-level discovery macros that you can use elsewhere. You can use the test function on the item or discovery rule to see the obtained output. One of the first things that you will notice when logging into 5.0 is the new menu redesign. Gone is the horizontal menu and we have replaced it with a vertical one fit for widescreen environments. We have also added a new monitoring host section that you can use to see the status of your hosts, how many problems they have and much more. We have also worked on improving our widgets. We have added a couple of new functionalities. One of them is copying your widgets. Just click on the widget, click copy, click paste and you will have a duplicate of your existing widget that you can work on. Another new feature is the ability to save your graphs as images. 
And once you have done that, you can do with those images whatever you want. Maybe you want to push them into some third-party system or just email them to your boss. You're free to do as you please. By using the webhooks feature, we were finally able to add out-of-the-box support for integration with multiple different ITSM and help desk systems. And that list will just keep on growing in the future. If you're upgrading from an existing Zabbix installation, all you have to do is download the XML file from Git and import it into your Zabbix instance. You may need to specify some additional parameters on the media type, such as the API token. And if you wish to tweak the integration, feel free to edit the JavaScript code. All of the integrations are based on JavaScript. Once that is done, you need to assign the media of this media type to your user. Probably it's going to be a service account of sorts that you have created. And for example, specify the Slack chat channel. Once that is done, you can test your integration and you will see your problem messages, your recovery messages being sent to your external system. Version 5.0 delivers many new out of the box templates. Not only we support a greater selection of vendors, but we also support many different new approaches for monitoring each system. ODBC versus Zabbix agent, it's completely up to you. If you wish to implement these templates in an already existing instance, all you have to do is navigate to our Git page, download the XML file, import it into your instance, and you're ready to start monitoring. If the template is based on Go Agent plugin, all you have to do is compile the agent with the plugin enabled and you're ready to start. Do you have a great idea for a new module and you're willing to help us develop it? Well, now you can. All you have to do is sign the Zabbix contributor license agreement, implement an already existing feature request or create a new one, pass the code to our developers for review, and once it has been approved, your feature could just become a part of every new Zabbix release. It's that simple. Thank you for joining me in the journey through Zabbix 5.0 new features and changes. Feel free to check the documentation, download the version 5.0 for cloud or on-prem environments, and try it out for yourselves. If you need any professional technical help, we are here to upgrade you up to version 5.0 or provide support for you in your day-to-day -day monitoring tasks. For any further information, check out our services webpage. Thank you for watching and enjoy the new Zabbix version 5.0.